Hello, and in this lesson, we are going to learn how to create a multilingual course in GOMO. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new project, and we'll give our project a name, multi-demo. And then we're going to select our language. So we have our default language, which is British English, but we also need to choose the other languages that we're going to have this course translated to. So we need to go ahead and make those selections now. So this is set as the default, but we're also going to do Chinese, and we'll also do French. Now we can choose a theme, and as you know, the theme is what, what controls the look and the feel of the course. So you could, con you could completely build your course and then change the theme, and you're not going to have to worry about what it does to the content. That all stays the same. Uh, I am not going to have an introduction topic. This is going to be a short course, so I'll just have one topic. But I do need to choose the language selector because the learners need to be able to have a way uh, that they can select what language they want. This, of course, is going to be who I can choose, who I would like to collaborate with on the project if somebody else was going to help me with this. But in this case, we're not. Now, if you did forget to choose your different languages, or maybe somebody comes and they say, hey, we actually need it in uh, German as well, uh, or maybe you just built the course to begin with in English, and someone says, this is a great course, we need this in Hebrew as well, you can go back into the project, into the settings, and make those selections there, and I'll show you that here uh, before we get started. So here is our project structure, we're in the tree view, and again, if I go to my settings, this takes me back where I can make those language selections if I wanted to. Uh, also, the language selector, again, if you maybe forgot to, to, uh, to add that, I'm just right-clicking and hitting remove item. You can click on any of these up here and go ahead and add it that way. Uh, I will also show you a, another way that you can make the learner select the language once we actually get into the course. So let's just go ahead and do that. Now, one thing you will notice is a little bit different. Uh, there is going to be a language selector in here, and that has to do with localization, uh, which we will talk about here momentarily. I'm just going to go ahead and delete a few things and kind of get this set up for my, my course. I've got some uh, text that I copied from someplace else that I'm going to use. Let's say this is a button that we want to link to one of our other topics, and we'll make this say learn more, dot, dot, dot. Uh, maybe we want to drop in an audio uh, player. Maybe we'll have something different for each language. And then maybe we also want to put in uh, an image up here at the top. And let's say that, again, I want to select from a specific folder that I use all the time, and maybe I want to see the thumbnail view, so it's a little bit easier, and there's Buckingham Palace. All right, so let's say that I want to now do a little bit of localization, and I want, if somebody were to choose Chinese, they would see a different picture. If I come up to the language selector and choose Chinese, you'll notice everything has a red background, and what that is telling me is that's telling me that none of this has been translated yet. So, or fit for that particular language. So if somebody chooses Chinese, I would like that to have a pagoda. So this is now has a green background, so this is going to be specifically for Chinese. Same thing for French. Maybe I want them to have and a lovely picture of the Eiffel Tower. We can do that. Now, when the learner will click on the language selector on the screen, the drop-down, obviously it's going to change the languages and change the various things that they see. Now, if you do have an audio file that uh, you need to play for French, or you have an audio file that you need to play for, for uh, Chinese, you will have to obviously put in those individual files separately. I'll just go ahead and drop one in, in here for, for English. But now there's another way that you can get them to select the language as well. And you can either use it by using a button, or maybe we can use a hotspot image. So we'll go out, and I've got an image created uh, that's got these three flags of these different nations on here. And what we'll do now is we'll just go ahead and we'll save that. And now we will set these hotspots. So here's the first hotspot. 
we'll add two more. The third one. And the second one. So what we're going to do with these hotspots is we're going to set actions. So whenever somebody clicks on the British flag, it's going to set the language to British English. And then we'll do the same thing for France. Set the language, French. And finally, Chinese. Set the language to Chinese. And we will confirm. So this is what we're going to do for just our, our small course. Now we will go in and we'll show you how to export those XLIF files. Up here in Actions, you have Translation Export. And what this will do is this will actually create a XLIF file, zip file. And that file looks like this. And it's just a simple zip file, but it does have some coding in it. Uh, each one of these are individual files for the specific language that needs to be um, translated. And I believe here are some that have already been translated. And we'll just do here. This is French. So you can get an idea what this looks like. Okay, and here is what the French XLIF file looks like. So we have the English on the left and we have the French on the right. So you would send this XLIF file off to a translator and that's what it is that they're looking for. And then once you get that back, you will actually have the option to import this. And I haven't exported it yet, so it's not opened up the, uh, the option. But let's go ahead and see what one looks like that has already been translated. So if I go into my project folder, which some of you might not know is new, you can go up and create a new folder so you can organize your courses much easier. And let's open up this multilingual course right here. So because this has had an XLIF file exported, we have the ability to import that XLIF file. And it's looking for that zip file that contains all of those XLIF files. Now if we go in and we do a preview, And while that is warming up, I want to go ahead and show you also what this looks like after the uh, XLIF file has been imported. So here is our course in English. And now if we change it to Chinese, everything is green because it's all been translated. And French, again, everything has been green because it's been translated. So if we now go into our preview, and we needed to change the language, we do have the two options. We have the language selector at the top. I can change it to Chinese, or we also have the flags at the bottom. So if I wanted to click on one of these, of course, we change this to French and then back to English. And of course, with the preview mode, you can look at it, what it's going to look like as a tablet or a smartphone. And let's change it back to Chinese. And that is how you do a multilingual course. If you have any other questions or just have any other support ideas or questions, just simply go to gomolearning.com and click on support where you'll find a lot more useful videos. Thank you very much and enjoy your day.